Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to War Thunder with yours truly WB886. Now today we're actually going to be taking out the B2 Canberra uh, in some realistic battles on Korea. A uh, thing about the B2 Canberra is it was recently added in 1.43. Uh, unfortunately, as a lot of you are aware, I wasn't actually around for 1.43. Uh, so I'm, I've got a lot of catching up to do, unfortunately. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a plane a day, if that makes sense. I kind of want to show you some of my new aircraft. In fact, I'll show you some now. Uh, but the, today's focus will be on the B2 Canberra. I know in 1.45 there will be a cannon variant. Um, I will also do a video on that. Also, I think the battle range changes in 1.45 as well. So the Canberra, gameplay wise, is going to be a little bit different to what you're seeing here. Um, but I just want to show you some of my newer aircraft that I've got recently. Uh, obviously, it's the B2 Canberra. Uh, if you want this skin, link will be in the description below. It isn't quite finished. I'm waiting for 1.45 to finish this. Uh, it will also be updated to 4K DDS. It's currently at 2K DDS. Uh, once that's all completed, then I will release a 4K version. Because uh, at the moment, uh, the front part here, I don't know if you can see properly, but it kind of it isn't exactly the right colour. So I've got to try and, and also the door here, you can see quite clearly. But if you just want to fly the skin as it is now, link in the description below. Uh, but apart from this, some new aircraft that I've got. Uh, I have got the Venom. Also, this is a skin that I've made. Again, it will be updated to 4K DDS at some point. Um, I'll tell you what as well, I think I will show you very quickly uh, my Lancaster. Um, I've actually made a, this is a really cool skin by uh, the Mighty Red, the Mighty Arrow, I believe his name is. I will actually put his uh, name or his link to his profile on War Thunder Live in the description as well. He does loads of Lo Lancaster skins and they're fantastic. Um, but this is my one here. Uh, it's called Grog Grog's the Shot. Some of you may remember this already uh, from a long time ago. That was originally a really crappy version. Uh, what I've got now is a updated 4K DDS version uh, with custom damage textures, etc, etc. Uh, I did put a hell of a lot of detail into this. Hang on, I'll just show you here. It's probably one of my favourite parts. You've got scratches on the propellers that I've added. Uh, exhaust residue, as you would imagine. Um, I, there is also a load of dirt. Uh, I've paid clo quite close attention to weathering. As you see here, there's a lot more exhaust marks uh, coming out of the engine as well. So that's always pretty nice. Um, tower section, nah, it's okay. This is what you expect, really. Um, all the writing on the side. But I, I'm really pleased with the outcome for that. Um, what else about? Ah, I got the D521. I did grind out that uh, that day, or was it something about a, a three-day period? Wasn't it something like that? Uh, so I got the D521. So yes, there will be videos on that. Don't you worry. Um, what else? Oh, I got a Catalina. I felt like buying the Catalina because, you know, it's British. <laughs> Anything British is good. So, um, good stuff. And it's also got Freedom Cows. So, yay. Um, what else? I th oh, no, 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 no. That's on my laptop. So, I'm going to have to transfer the files over. I did make a Spitfire Mark 1A skin. And what that did is, you won't be able to see it here, obviously. Actually, wait, what? Ah, oh, sweet. Well, I've actually got one. But it's not my one. Um, ah, yeah, I did the exact same. Basically, I changed the colour of the underneath part so that it was, it was correct. Uh, because if you look here, it's a blue colour. In real life, it isn't blue. It's, a, it's that colour there. And I changed the prop to black, like the real ones, the very early ones. So, uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, what else have I got that I could show you? Hmm... Have I got any on, anything on the Japanese? I got my G5, finally. Um, I haven't done really much on the Japanese because they just don't interest me enough. Um, I mean, a lot of people will kill me for saying that because I'm not denying the Japanese are really good if you know how to fly them, but I just don't like Japanese aircraft for whatever reason, so, yeah, whatever. Um, Russian Tech Tree for the tanks. I have been doing a little bit of stuff on that. Uh, I've now got my T-3485 here. Uh, I think I, you saw this in the welcome back video. I've got the T-3485 and I have got the IS-1, which is rather nice. So, yay. Um, got the SU-85s, haven't bought them yet. Working on the SU-152. 
I've got this low tier bugger right here, uh, the T3. Uh, basically, it's a Russian captured Panzer III. Uh, the Panzer III of F, I think. Sorry if that is correct. Uh, actually, information. Nope, no information. Okay. I think it's the Panzer III of F. Uh, but what I've done sneakily is I have disguised it to be German. As you can see here, I've been using the kill markings to make it look like a German tank. Now what I've actually been doing is I've been taking this thing into simulator battles. I yeah. <laughs> um, it it's rather amusing just going alongside the enemy uh, without them realising. The only thing they can distinguish is the, uh, the it being green. What I've also done, done I've added the, uh, you can barely see it, but I've added the Soviet uh, star on the back there so friendlies know I am actually Soviet. Uh, as you can see here actually though, uh, well, although it won't look quite as effective at mid camouflage condition. Um, if I put that all the... Actually, I can. Like that. Okay. Um, then right down to that. Confines rotation to that. Right. If I then put the... Um, the decals on that, it makes it look grey. Uh, so that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. What else have I got to show you? I have, have I got a thing in the aviation? Not really. Maybe in LA7, that's about a bit. Uh, Germany. Germany, 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 Germany. Jagdpanther, Tiger 2, Tiger 2 H. That's about it. Uh, aviation, nearly got everything on the tech tree now. Uh, so I've got the MiG-15, I have the CL-13, I have everything basically. Uh, because I was grinding out with the B6R3. Uh, that thing used to be a monster. It isn't so much anymore because it hasn't got many bombers to find. Uh, I'm now researching the Horton 229, as you would expect. Now, the, um, the Americans. Right, so I now have an F9F Panther. I have the first Sabre. I have unlocked the F7F. I haven't bought it because I'm not particularly a fan of it. Uh, I got the, cab the Canberra. Uh, although it is a peasant's camera, it isn't a real camera, because this is American. Uh, but I've also got these babies right here. Uh, the A26 Invaders. I was given this very nicely as a birthday present um, by Gaijin. So that's always really nice. I absolutely love this because it's the PS4 version, and I'm one of the only people that have it on PC. Uh, the, the reason why it's different is not only because of its RP game. I'll show you that. Oh, God. See? Uh, it also can equip this. Hang on. Uh, it can equip 14 rockets. So it's pretty beasty. Uh, it's very good for bombers versus bombers because fly, fly. Right, I know you were pissed off with me for using this. You were saying bombers only. Look, bomber. Not medium bomber, bomber. See, shush your face. Right, now I've got that over and done with. Uh, it also has the same payload as a standard B-17, except it has 50 gals, so that's always nice. Uh, it has the optional of 2100s, uh, 8500s, 4000s or 2200s, and obviously the rockets. Uh, the gunners are extremely accurate, <laughs> because they're the radio controlled ones that were put in by the Korean War era. The same ones that are on the B-29 essentially. Um, so I now know what the B-29 guns are going to be like, and they're bloody good. So, good stuff. Apart from that, that's about it. But without further ado, what we'll do is we will hop into a realistic battle on Korea, and I'll speak to you there. So while we're actually watching some gameplay of the B-2 Canberra, I thought I'd give you a little bit of information into the background of it. Uh, the English Electric Canberra is a British first-generation jet-powered medium bomber. Uh, it manufactured in large numbers, particularly in the 1950s. The Canberra could actually fly at a higher altitude than any bomber through the 1950s. So it was one of the highest flying bombers at the time. Uh, I believe it actually set a world altitude record of around 70,000 feet, which is 21,400 meters um, in 1957. So even in 1957, it was a pretty damn good aircraft. Uh, due to its ability to evade early jet interceptors and the significant performance and advancement over contemporary piston engine bombers 
the Canberra was very was an extremely popular export to other countries. Uh, it served with many air forces. As we know, we have the American Canberra in as well under the license of, of Martin Baker or something, isn't it? Something like that. Whatever. <laughs> in addition to being a tactical nuclear strike aircraft, the Canberra proved to be highly adaptable, serving in varied roles such as tactical bombing, uh, aerial reconnaissance, electronic reconnaissance, and it actually served in quite a few um, theatres of war. For example, it served in the Su Suarez Crisis, the Vietnam War, the Falklands War, and the Indo-Pakistani Wars. Uh, so it's been in quite a few combat uh, scenarios, and numerous African conflicts as well. In the several wars, each of the opposing sides had cameras in their air forces, so the camera was actually retired by its first operator, the Royal Air Force, in June 2006, so it's had a very, very long lifespan. Very long. Uh, 57 years after its first flight, so it's done pretty well for itself. Um, two Martin B-57 variants remain in service uh, for NASA, uh, which is, there's a skin on War Thunder Live, I believe you can get for that too. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty versatile aircraft, as you would imagine. Uh, the background of the Canberra, uh, it had its origins in 1944, where the Air Ministry required a successor to the de Havilland Mosquito a high-altitude, high-speed bomber with no defensive armament. Several British aircraft manufacturers submitted proposals, among the companies uh, shortlisted to proceed with the development studies was English Electric, which is what the make of the Canberra is. Uh, it was a well-established industrial manufacturer with very little uh, des aircraft design experience, so, you know, obviously they're going to take a lot of care choosing this company. Despite the company not having that much experience with aircraft, um, the Cabra itself was extremely good. It exceeded many expectations and was easily one of the best bombers of the time period. Um, it was exported to hundreds of countries as we've said before. It's particularly the US Air Force licensed it under Martin Baker. So it's a very good aircraft and it does portray itself that way in War Thunder you can have this sense of you're faster than everyone else. Although it's got to be very, very careful. Um, in War Thunder, they've got it at kind of the wrong level. So that's why its battle rating is being increased in 1.45. Uh, because currently it outruns m almost every single aircraft it comes up against. Which, yeah, it did in real life. But for a gameplay aspect, it's not kind of what you want. You kind of want to have a jet that's going to be good, but also that's not going to be too under-tiered. Uh, so that's what they're fixed in 1.45, which is kind of nice, really. Um, what I'm up to at the moment is I've actually gone and b bombed one of the base points, and we can now attack the airfield. Uh, now, I actually screw up my attack run because I can't quite work out where the hell the base is. Uh, as you see, I'm kind of diving here with my air brakes out. Uh, the reason why I do that is that the air brakes um, make enough drag that I won't overspeed, but I'm not going too slow that everyone can catch me. Um, I actually put them away here because I kind of want to get build up some speed to drop the bombs and then get the hell out of the way of the AA fire. But as you see, I kind of screw up my attack run. I'm like, oh, I've actually overshot it. So I need to then go up, loop round, uh, air brakes out to slow me down while I'm turning. Ah, IL-28. That's going to be a problem. So, I actually go into a dive here, hoping I can try and evade him. Uh, yeah, I've actually lost him in the clouds, and I'm like, oh, okay, let's just drop the bombs and get the hell out of here. Um, as you see, I put the air brakes away. So, bomb's gone around here, and I need to get the hell out of there. Oh, dear. There's an <laughs> IL-28 on my six. Right, time to run. So... I was thinking he's actually catching up to me, so how can I outdo an IL-28 because he has guns? I thought, thinking about it, I can try and outturn him. I don't want to pull too hard because I know for a fact that I will rip my wings if I do that. So I'm trying to be very careful, just turning ever so slightly before he can, and I get the advantage of being able to speed away. Uh, so that's that was very lucky in consideration. 
Um, but the camera itself is a really nice plane. Uh, it responds well. It's a bit sluggish on acceleration, uh, as it was in real life. There was numerous reports that if they accelerated too quickly, uh, the engine would actually burn out on the camera. So, mm, um, kind of the design flaw there, but that was mainly because of early jet technology. Um, you know, I don't think it's represented in game. Uh, if it were, a lot of people would probably uh, have a hard time taking off from airfields without blowing their engines up. Um, but the camera itself, it's fast, it's maneuverable, it has a very good payload, and next patch, it will have quad 20mm Hispano Mark V cannons with 500 out rounds of ammunition each. If you haven't worked that out, that's 2,000 rounds of ammunition, including payload. Uh, I went on dev the other day, and it can still carry five 1,000 pound bombs. Five. It actually has under wing ports, uh, which bombs attach to. So that's pretty awesome, in my opinion. Um, I'm not entirely sure about the, what do you call it, the um, fuel tanks. I don't know whether, whether fuel tanks will be in 1.45 or not. Um, it would be cool if they were, but I don't believe it will be. Um, but the Canberra is a very good aircraft. Very, 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 very good aircraft. Uh, but unfortunately, this is about it for the end of the match because the IL-28 gets shot down by the FAC you, you see over there. Uh, I would normally show you to the end of the match, but this video is already coming on to around 16 minutes. So I'm actually going to end it here. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you click that like button below. Subscribe if you're new around here for more War Thunder content. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.